so thank you so much for inviting me today. Um, my understanding is I'm here to share with you some of the key issues that are facing internationally trained pharmacists. And I have to say I'm, I'm, I, I'm very pleased because I, I believe that I had the opportunity to work with internationally trained pharmacists very closely, either through the International Pharmacy Grant Program that I'm, I'm teaching at, or through the, uh, my work at Sheridan College, where we, significant part of our class is actually internationally trained pharmacists coming to Canada to get um, through the college system kind of thing. Uh, so through this long time being involved in uh, educating internationally trained pharmacists, I have the chance to identify two key issues that we do have. The first one is, and these are the immediate ones. On the long run, I can envision more issues coming but not for the next five to ten years. But for the time being, there are two key issues that we do have. The first one is the limited trading opportunity. And the second one is the competitive employment environment. Okay. So when it comes to the trading opportunity for pharmacists, I have to say the pathway for pharmacists here in Canada, for the international trained pharmacists here in Canada, is much more structured and it's much easier compared to other healthcare professionals. Okay, it's easy to come to Canada and it's easy to get a license. It's not impossible, but, but there are some challenges as well. So the first one again is the limited trading opportunity. There are two, there are multiple factors contributing to this. One of the important factors contributing to the limited trading opportunities for pharmacists is that the fact the schools of pharmacies that we do have do you have some connections with the big corporations, with the big companies like Shoppers, Walmart, and Lovebus? And due to this kind of um, long-term relation, which is well established that it's everywhere, there is some sort of commitment for the big companies to take the students coming out of university for placement. So this limits the opportunity for the international trade pharmacists. And again. That's, that's absolutely fine because these corporates support the universities, they, they have long-term relations and things like that. But the fact is, this limits the opportunity for the international trade pharmacists to find a placement opportunity. That's one issue. Another issue that we do have here in Ontario, which is, again, I believe it's everywhere in Canada as well, is the fact that we don't have um, a structured way or um, um, a centralized way to apply for studentship and internship. Is it a good idea? Is it a bad idea? I don't really know. Uh, but the fact that the fact that we can't apply to the same place and get the same opportunity to have an interview and to find the right spot for us is a challenge. So when you apply, you may not get an interview. Hopefully we can have this kind of centralized system there. That's another problem or another challenge that we do have that limits our opportunity of finding a placement. Uh, a third one is the lack of incentive for preceptors to take pharmacists. That's another challenge. When I came to Canada 11, 12 years ago, I restarted my career. The company I used to work for at that time used to pay the pharmacist $3,000 for each trainee as a lump sum. This doesn't exist anymore. So the lack of incentive limits the ability of the preceptors to take students and at the same time preceptors wonder why do we need even to do this. So that's another thing. And the last point here is um, you, you hear this all the time on TV that the Ontario government now is eyeing the unpaid internship. This would be a huge challenge for the internationally trained pharmacists. Basically because now the only opportunity for a pharmacist to get the training is to have a free internship. And this is the only incentive for the, for the preceptor. Because the preceptor will give you the opportunity and you will work for free. Unfair? Yes. But this is the opportunity. So when the government will track or keep, keep eye on the unpaid internship, I believe this will increase the difficulty of finding placement here in Ontario for international trade pharmacists. So this is again multifactorial issue dealing with placement opportunity. When it comes to the completed employment, okay. When it comes to the completed employment, I have to say there are also multiple factors for that. 
So there is an increasing number of pharmacists, and I have to say, many pharmacists come to Canada with good intention, everything is fine, but they come without being accounted for as pharmacists. And this is basically the students who come to the colleges. We get 70 and 80 students three or four, four times a year. They are internationally trained pharmacists. They come as college students. Their intention is to become pharmacists, not to become pharmacy technicians. And as such, they are not accounted for as pharmacists. So this increases the number of pharmacists. Another issue that we do have, and I have to admit that I myself is included, is we all try to work in the GTA. And this significantly limits our opportunity to find a placement and to find a job. Another challenge that we do have finding an employment is the fact <laughs> okay, well, I, I will give you one more point. Uh, the, other, the last factor that I think we have is the fact that after we graduate as international pharmacy, uh, sorry, as international pharmacy grad, once we get our license, the only sector in the industry that accepts us is community pharmacy. Some of us come with huge hospital experience, and it's very difficult for them to find a hospital job with their experience just because they lack the hospital training here in Canada, which you cannot find, very difficult to get in. So that's another factor. So again, it's a multifactorial issue when it comes to uh, finding a job opportunity uh, for international training pharmacists. So these are the two major issues on the long run. The fact that the universities here in Canada will start to graduate doctors of pharmacy as of 2015 will create right away a two-tier or two-level <coughs> industry doctors and pharmacists. And this will make it even more difficult for those who come from other countries without a doctor's degree in pharmacy. So, thank you so much.